Hello and welcome. Today we're going to speak about solution architecture and the role of solution architect, sometimes being referred to as solutions, a plural with an S, architect. And my name is Henrik Ullemo. So if we go to Wikipedia and check up solution architecture, we have a little description here where it reads solution architecture is a practice defining and describing an architecture of a system delivered in context of a specific solution and as such it may encompass description of an entire system or its specific parts um mouthful um definition of a solution architecture is typically led by a solutions architect if i click on here and go to the next page here on a solutions architect we see that the, from a plural solutions we end up going to a page where it says solution architect a uh, bit misleading as well uh, i don't think there is any specific difference in between a solution or a solutions architect if i go to the talk page here where i can have the discussion we see we have solutions why the plural question mark and some discussion going on here and why we should use plural or not i think it's down to pure semantics uh, and that's my definition as well it, it doesn't really matter if you use the plural or not but if for in the remainder of uh, of my purpose here i will use the the singular one the the plu not the plural one i will use the solution architecture and the solution architect role basically we have three different definitions of what a solution architecture implies and the first one being from the open group and it reads something like this a description of a discrete and focused business operations or activity and how is it supports that operation a solution architecture typically applies to a single project or project release assisting in the translation of requirements into a solution vision high level business and or it system specifications and a portfolio of implementation tasks that's the open group architecture framework of TUGAF definition of um, solution architecture another one is uh, from Gartner and it reads something like this a solution architecture is an architectural description or a specific of a specific solution solution architectures combine guidance from different enterprise viewpoints such as business information and technical as well as from the enterprise solution architecture and that was from uh, gartner and how the from the uh, gartner it glossary and we have a third one here uh, from uh, get it two persons uh, an architecture of a solution where a solution is a is a system that offers a coherent set of functionalities to its environments as such it concerns those properties of a solution that are necessary and sufficient to meet its essential requirements a bit vague that one as well I, I think from my taste the the second one here the Gartner one is the most that is aligned with my personal definition of how I, how I would describe solution architecture I really like this uh, connection both to the enterprise architecture and also to the, the, uh, the various viewpoints with business information and technical that's really central to me what a solution architecture is all about Another really great view of uh, solution architecture is coming from the Swedish IT architecture organization called IASA and they have released a book called the architect book it's in Swedish uh, only unfortunately but it's a really good book describing the various viewpoints of uh, architecture IT or architecture from uh, business architecture to IT to solution to infrastructure and I really like this uh, view because it gives us a really nice image something like this this is my my personal interpretation of of, uh, of that uh, and it really comes down to the solution architecture is in the middle here of uh, two axes one of how much you focus on the technical or technology details 
and the other one on is the towards the business and this is the details and the big picture so the business strategy so if we're looking for example here at the business architect we see that the focus is really towards the business side and the focus is also towards the big picture and not too much into the small details the the software architect is really much into the details and is not so focused on the business uh, strategy and the third one here or the fourth one is uh, infrastructure architect it's very much towards the technology or, or technical side of things but not so much focused onto the big pictures either so the software and the infrastructure architecture is really focused on on more on the details and more on the techno technical side whilst the solution architect is focusing to bridge communication from uh, the business all the way to the the technology and it's like a, a carrier of information and, and solving problems on various domains here so it can be problems related to the, the code or the actual software it can also be with regards to the infrastructure or a mix in between those two but it can also be something that the business needs to interpret into maybe software uh, development uh, tasks so <clears throat> this is a really great viewpoint also because it's referring to the enterprise architecture being rather a function in between those uh, other types of architecture so it's not one person show the enterprise architecture is not a role per se it's more of a function when the business architecture the solution architect and the software architecture and the infrastructure architect it's kind of reporting up towards the the enterprise architecture as a function rather than a one person who actually knows all of the of the expertise of all the various architecture disciplines looking at uh, the enterprise architecture function uh, in on top of an application life cycle we have the governance development and operations the blue orange and green lines here when the governance is moving from a business case to a portfolio uh, project portfolio management to an application portfolio management state and that's typically when you have a, a typical project a version one we have and then we move to the operation side and we focus on getting the insights and monitoring and the operations going and in the development phase we have version one version two and so on the architecture function is really gathering during the entire life cycle information and know-how about the system architecture the application the infrastructure and everything with with everything that uh, the the architecture viewpoint is needed like the information and technical and everything like that so that's one of the reasons i prefer the gartner definition as well because it's so many various viewpoints uh, both from uh, the gathering the initial business case uh, being developed and the project but also when it's uh, been uh, managed or when it's been when the operation when it's in operation in production we have the need of uh, several different architecture roles and hence the the function is needed as well to to aggregate the information in a way that we can actually secure the benefits and we can address things like technical depth and stuff like that because if we have aggregate too much in our backpack we might not be able to reach the the business benefits in in time and that means that we might miss opportunities of business and that goes back to the the architecture side of things because without architecture we we don't really have a technical detailed plan another view that's pretty interesting is the agile architecture and how that fits together with the solution architect and this is a typical setup of a scrum team when we have the team here in the middle and we have the product owner really answering the question of uh, the business what and why the business need and uh, arrange the priorities in the backlog and we have this scrum master focusing on the team facilitation activities and we also typically have a solution lead somewhere someone in the team possibly who has the technical vision and the technical expertise and 
engineering uh, practices to describe the qualities and the non-functional concerns typically around performance, scalability, security and availability. And that needs to be addressed for in the life cycle as well. So that's really a key person to have a, some kind of a solution lead or technical lead or, or some someone like that who actually can refer to the the technical expertise whilst the scrum master focusing actually on the on the process and and the team and and secures the team that the team can actually do what's needed and the product owner of course on the business so this is a really good uh, visual representation as well of how a solution architect can be uh, described within some teams as well um another thing here is um is uh, around scaled agile and how we scale the agility and i like this uh, this little uh, image here as well when we can see what we have so we have different uh, architecture viewpoints as well we have here in the in the top layer here in the enterprise level we have the enterprise architecture this is one person i think that might be a bit uh, contradictory to what I just said but this for my point of view at least is more of a function rather than a person and we have the solution architecture or a solution engineer here in in the middle in the coordination in the in economic framework here uh, focusing on the value stream rather than on the portfolio so this is a scaled agile framework this is a framework for using to how to scale the agility into a enterprise uh, function so so here we have the, the solution architecture, architecture focusing on things like DevOps and system development team and release management and stuff like that. Focusing on the vision, roadmap and metrics and getting everything together into the release train as they call it here. But we have something called a system architect uh, or engineer here in this case also focusing on the on the program or on the team and team level we have the product owner and scrum master but we should have some kind of uh, technical lead here as well i would think that maybe the system architecture is for helping here as well but uh, I think this is a really good uh, visual uh, thing as well when we can see we have the enterprise architect, we have the solution architect, we have the system architect and maybe we have the technical lead here as well in, in one of those roles as well. So what does a solution architect actually do? I would say that uh, one of the things that uh, one of the first things that the solution architect focus on is actually to evaluate if uh, we can reuse an existing solution or if we can modify any of existing solutions or if we need to develop a new solution so that means that one of the key skills of a solution architecture is to actually understand the the environment and the the situation and what's possible with the with the given scenario and also to be able to collaborate and communicate with other architects and other people within the organization to to get things going and to to find the proper solution and i would also say that uh, one of the key things when we see lots of solution architectures is within the integration in between application to application integrations and not only within the the one application per se it's also to how to bridge uh, information from one application to another one like this little example here for example to point to point communication uh, and to have the information exchange from one application to another one and the solution architect needs to define and how to make things actually work in between all of the integration interfaces and in some organizations we also have a integration broker when we have the mediated communication and then the solution architecture really also is can be about how to make this integration actually work and to make everything aligned with this so we don't have a point-to-point -point, uh, integration but rather as a, 
uh, in understanding of the broker in between but still it's the same skill set needed i would say it's it's about communication it's about leadership it's about technical understanding and how to communicate that to various sides of the organization and how to communicate with the how to explain really technical things in a way that the business can understand and focus on the non-functional uh, requirements as well and saying oh, if we do it this way we might not get the speed uh, or we don't we might encounter other types of uh, technical uh, problems down the line in the life cycle so this is kind of the key things and key skills needed by a solution architect is to actually communicate both the technical and business related uh, questions and how to integrate everything in between and how to make this integration uh, both of uh, information and also technical details and uh, integration should flow actually work within the organization and find the proper solution towards that another area where we see lots of solution architects uh, it's in within the infrastructure and cloud uh, spaces with images something like this when you communicate to the uh, this is how it used to be when, when it was, was all of the customer managed everything in the stack was uh, within the enterprise was a legacy now when we move to the cloud we're gonna only manage this and if we take this as a platform as a service rather than infrastructure as a service we only manage this and if we, we buy software as a service we, we don't have any responsibility the provider is managing everything from the entire stack and this is just one example of how a solution architect can define the solution and just looking at this stack here we need all the way from data centers to the applications it's so many things and so many expertise and so many other architecture roles and technical roles so it's it's not only about the code it's also about the environment and the security and databases and uh, virtualization as a service and all the way to the physical things like networking and, and, and actual data center and uh, everything like that so it's, it's really complex to say that this is the definition of a solution architecture there is so many different uh, definitions and so many different roles so i would say that uh, a successful solution architect has a really broad understanding of uh, technical things within the it space so so maybe you you have experience for long experience from different types of roles and maybe you have started as developer understanding databases and virtualizations and application development and everything like that but your today going forward it's a lot about the cloud how can you do things as a service and then your role as a solution architect it might be how do we define when we're going to go and purchase this software how do we do really define the the non-functional requirements uh, that's a completely different question and then you need to have some kind of understanding of the and how to communicate uh, towards various layers like this it's it's not always easy and i don't think uh, solution architecture is the the first role you're going to take when you're newly new to the industry it's it's something that you need a pretty good uh, technical background and people background as well you need to be able to communicate with lots of different people and have understanding of that uh, how to communicate in various ways as well so so i would say you need pretty good experience uh, to be able to be a successful solution architect thank you very much for looking at this and hope it was useful for you and in that case uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel and also have a look at uh, this website here application lifecycle management body of knowledge for additional information so until next time have a great one